This is the Coach You Show on Startup Club, and we do this show with Dennis Hosting every Thursday evening at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific, here on Startup Club. And this show is being recorded, so if you raise your hand and join us on stage at some point, uh, know that by coming up on stage, you're giving us permission to record you. And recordings of the Coach You Show are available over at startup.club. So you can get recordings of this episode and previous episodes of the Coach You Show over at startup.club. Welcome, Dennis, or should I say welcome, Coach You. <laughs> welcome, Jeffrey, and welcome, everybody. I'm excited about this week because I'm, I'm going to share some examples, and I want you guys to share examples on what we can do in just one minute. All of us are so busy. We have so many things going on. I'm so glad that we're hanging out together here in Clubhouse today of all the times and things that you could do to invest your time. And because we're so busy, we feel like we have this unlimited to-do list. And the more things that we do, the more things we then spawn needing to do. So it feels like a whack-a-mole game if you're an entrepreneur, especially. I know you guys know what I'm talking about. So I wanted to share some of these one-minute recipes on things that you can do in one minute. For example, I can record an intro to the Coach You Show, or I could share one tip that I know what to do, or I could hire Scott Monty on Rally Token, which I just did five minutes ago, to do a one-minute video of me. Or I got Grant Cardone to make a one-minute video about how to make a one-minute video. Or maybe one minute in the morning on gratitude. What are you, what, what are you grateful for? Your family, your friends, your job, your dog, your wife, the Starbucks coffee you have in the morning, whatever it might be. You're grateful that Stacy Copas joined as a listener and is a good friend. You can, in one minute, make a thank you video. You can text a friend. You can, here's my latest thing I just learned last week. You can make bacon in an air fryer. It takes me a minute. Now it cooks for nine, but it only takes me one minute. I just lay it in there, put it at 380 degrees, let it go for nine minutes, and I've got bacon. Only took me a minute, right? Let's say that you are having your morning routine, and maybe that involves putting something in the microwave. Are you the kind of person where if you've got a minute, do you just sit there and watch the microwave tick down, 59, 58, 57? Or do you try to do something in that minute? Maybe you can wash a couple dishes. Maybe you can check social media. Maybe you can load the dishwasher, right, while that minute's going down. Think about all the things that you can do. You have so much time. I have friends that we're in line at Costco buying a bunch of food for an event or something like that, and we're making the use of that time in three minutes. Sometimes I'll even pop in the clubhouse, and I'll do a three-minute pop-up room just for fun instead of just standing there in line waiting. Or you're on an airplane if you can still travel. And you're making use of that time. What can you do? There's so many minutes around the edges of your time that you might not be using to maximize your efficiency. One of my friends who I'm not going to name, he's so efficient that he's even on his phone talking and texting and whatnot while we're driving, which I don't, I don't think we should be doing because that's not a very safe thing to do. That's, that's using these minutes in the wrong way. But I wanted you guys to, to see, for my example, what I'm doing with the minutes that I have and see what you guys have shortly on things that you might do in one minute that we can compile into the ultimate one minute recipe book. And if you're like me and you work part time, I mean, you work 12 hours a day, <laughs> that's 720 minutes. That's 700 things that you could do. Not that everything takes a minute, but I found that most things actually do take a minute. A friend of mine, was supposed to call back someone that we met at a conference, but she didn't. And this is someone who wanted to give us $36,000 to come join our VIP coaching program. And all she had to do was call back this client and just say, Hey, I'm here. And here's how you sign up. And here's, you know, let me answer a couple questions you have about the program. This guy already wanted to sign up and she delayed it and delayed it. 13 days, 14 days. The guy texted me multiple times saying, hey, the account manager didn't call me back. And then I just said, you know what? Fine. I picked up the phone. I called him. I think it was seven minutes. But either way, it's the same thing. We had another client who wanted to join and he was being left just stra you know, stranded, basically, not getting any love. And one of our guys, Tucker Monheimer, called him up this morning. Literally took two minutes 
right? The things that you are pushing off because you're saying you're too busy, you don't have time, it's too difficult, it's fear, just admit it. Most people don't want to say I'm scared or I'm procrastinating. They literally take a minute or two to do. How long does it really take to do that thing that you are pushing off, right? When you boost a post on Facebook, how long does that take? I boosted some tweets today on on Twitter, for example, it literally took me a minute. I did a webinar an hour ago with Nick Parker on the Fitness Business Podcast, and I was showing fitness company CEOs how they can grow their personal brand. And we were talking about it and doing it at the same time. We probably completed 15 tasks in about 15 minutes. And it's not that you're just trying to get as many random little mindless tasks done as, as possible, but you're trying to make impact and spending less time in the thinking about it or talking about it and more time in the doing, right? Our buddy Corey here, he's a YouTube expert. I wonder how long it takes him to actually look at a campaign on YouTube and see how well it performs. Probably only a minute, but then there's all this time thinking about whether you're gonna do something about it, thinking about whether you're gonna contact the client, thinking about whether you have the energy to go in and do the analysis or whatever. And I would challenge you to think, how much of your time, like be honest with yourself, how much of your time is actually spent doing the thing versus you're delaying, procrastinating, making excuses. So today with these one minute recipes, I wanted to see what do you guys think? And first open it up to our friends to share. Maybe Thomas, Stacy, Corey, Kevin, you guys have some things you wanna share for one minute recipes that you get productivity, that you get things done. And we're going to invite, yeah, just go ahead now. So, Jeffrey, you're the mod. Yep, I just uh, brought Thomas up. But while you were talking, I wrote down some things that you could do in a minute, Dennis. Do you mind if I rattle them off? Let's do it. All right. So these are some things I wrote down that I think I can do in a minute. Catch your breath. Review a to-do list. Exercise. Hold your breath. Daydream. Write that email. Return that call. Look up a word you don't know. Add to a bucket list. Take a picture. Those are ones I wrote down while you were talking. Wow, that is fantastic. And the one-minute exercise is a fantastic one. My friend Chris Downey, he started Up For Sale, which he sold to eBay for $300 million. Crazy exit. And then he started Spark People, which is a community that I think he then sold to Weight Watchers for $250 million, something like that. And he would challenge me when we were together in Silicon Valley around, because I would give him excuses about why we weren't, why I wasn't working out, right? And I'd make all these excuses. And he'd look at me and say, Dennis, you could do 10 jumping jacks right now. You could do high knees or sprint in place right now. And he would message me every once in a while. I'd look at him. The guy was fit. I mean, the, but of course, he runs a fitness site, so he can't be fat and be doing that. But he'd say, Dennis, you always have a minute. And one of the things that, that I do now, especially when I don't have a lot of time, I don't have the energy, is in one minute, I'll do 10 burpees. Have you guys tried that? Try to do 10 burpees. If your doctor, you know, your fitness allows you to do something like that. But, you know, do 10 push-ups, something like that. But fantastic list, Jeffrey. You could also, on the exercise side, uh, you know, in CrossFit, we do a lot of uh, what we call a Tabata exercise, which is 20 seconds on and 10 seconds off. So you can do two rounds of something Tabata. So 20 seconds, really intense. Rest 10 seconds, 20 seconds, really intense, and rest 10 seconds, and there's your minute. Bingo. Thomas Hawkins. Hey, good evening. I just happened to think uh, one of the things that I started to do again, and it basically became a, because of the book by Philip Stutz, The Undefeated Marketing System, that you recommend to me, and he talks about in that book and on his podcast to do a personal note. I can do a personal note in about one minute. It doesn't have to be long. It can just be real quick thinking about you today or, or saw you, saw that you paid a bill. Thanks for your business. Just want to send you a note and say, thank you. That that's one thing that I've uh, recently taken up just as his uh, recommendation. The other thing is that with what is going on in my life lately, I'm spending a lot of time on the phone waiting for tech support for different uh, products. I'm, I'm learning or I'm being intentional about getting certain things done while I'm on the phone waiting, making sure I'm not wasting that time. It's easy to look at your phone and scroll through Facebook or LinkedIn or something. And I'm learning to uh, do those kinds of things as uh, to be intentional about the time that I'm using while I'm on hold uh, and, and waiting for tech support for some kind of thing. So those are a couple of things I wanted to share. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. 
thank you notes are maybe the highest ROI investments of one minute that you can do. And I'm surprised that people don't do it. I would literally go to a Hallmark store and go to the section with the cards where there's cards, right? Rows and rows of cards and their birthdays and anniversary and had a baby. There are hardly any thank you cards. Maybe there are 500 different kinds of cards there and there are like eight different kinds of thank you cards. I remember I was at the NBAA conference, which is something like 20,000 folks in the world of aviation, like private aircraft. And I remember getting a tour of one of the new Bombardier business jets. And I was inside there thinking, wow, this is really nice. Look at the coolest avionics and the interior. I wonder how many people get to fly in a jet like this, right? And I'm talking with one of the pilots and I pull out my phone and I make a video for my friend, Chris Kiocho, who runs an agency that serves folks in the private aviation industry. And I said, Chris, it is such an honor to be here because of the past that you gave us to hang out with these other folks and get a new tour of the new BBJ. And I started doing other little one minute videos, actually 15 second videos, right? So <laughs> there's things you can do in one minute, there's things you can do in 15 seconds. And I'd say, hey, Matthew, who's the CEO of Escape Fitness, I'm so honored that we've been able to work together the last seven years and just want to let you know I was thinking about you and I'm grateful and that's it. And then I would say to my friend, Michael Stelzner, who founded Social Media Examiner, hey, Michael, I was here at this conference and I thought of you last time we were together in San Diego and we hung out at the office and just wanted to let you know I appreciate you, my man. That's it. 15 seconds like that. And I was on that jet for another 10 minutes and I think I cranked out maybe 40 of them. So imagine just making someone's day, like just literally in 10 minutes, you sent out 40 little video messages that are in your text messenger or in your Facebook message or LinkedIn message or Twitter. You can all these other scenarios that you can reply with video. So think, I, I love Tom, how you're talking about a thank you note. There's so many different ways to say thank you. I think the best way to say thank you is with your face and your voice. I mean, you can buy something, a clever gift. One of my favorite things to do is do a bobblehead design it in their name. It's done in China. So it costs like $150, but literally just the thought, when was the last time someone has said thank you to you? And who are the people in your life that you could say thank you to while they're still here on the planet? Stacy, welcome to the show. Good morning from Sydney. I am loving the, the one minute, um, the challenge. And I remember I did a, I did a, a Instagram story about it a while ago, just um, telling people to do exactly the same thing, just to start to curate a list and, um, and to start to look at what are those things they can do. But um, and particularly, I know when, when Thomas has just said about being on hold, because I think that's probably one of the most um, frustrating times to try and fill that space. Um, but I think my favorite thing is, is, is building on the, the gratitude piece. Um, and I have a drawer full of blank cards. I found a, a, a really cool artist um, here in Australia that designed all her own um, cards. And some of them were, they were quirky and funny. And she was selling them for like a dollar each. And I think I bought like a hundred of them at a time. And I have them in a drawer. And, and it could be that, um, it could be that I've seen, because I have Google alerts set on um, certain people's names that I want to build a relationship with. Or I already have a relationship with. Um, and if I see that, you know, they've, um, they've won an award or things like that, then it could be a congratulations one. I have important people's birthdays in my calendar a week, a week before their birthday. So I can send them a, you know, send them a card. Um, but also just from the, from the gratitude piece, I use gratitude mantras. And I just did this before I got out of bed earlier. And so I just laid there and it probably took me, obviously it maybe time it, um, to, to do a gratitude mantra and I use it before I get out of bed of the morning and I use it before I go to sleep in the night and it literally is thank you for the opportunity to be who I am where I am with what I have at this moment in time I'm grateful for all of the experiences I've had the people I've met and the lessons that I've learned I love who I am and I'm excited about the infinite power I have to create the future I desire and deserve I'm proud of what I do and the impact that it has in the world that only I can have What's that, about 20 seconds? Wow, that's awesome. You should put that on a blog post or tweet it so the rest of us can see that. I like that gratitude mantra. I'm grateful, Stacy, for when you, me, and Serena on a muggy day in Nashville, Tennessee, got together around some monuments, walking around the lake, and we started making one-minute videos. 
we started talking about dollar a day. We talked about social media marketing world. We talked about conferences that we were at. We talked about your situation and how you overcome adversity. Think about the power of those one minute videos to be able to affect other people, especially when we use the dollar a day technique so that other people can see it. Now all of a sudden that one minute video being seen by thousands of people is creating 50, 100 hours of time of impact because you're not gonna get more time, but you can certainly trade money to get back more time. And other people should be able to share in that moment that we had, Stacy. you remember? You mean Serena, two Australians and one American? That was amazing. And I just love how we were able to be there at the same time. And it definitely was a highlight of my trip. And I'm so glad that we got to do that before um, before we were unable to travel again. Um, and I think one of my highlights was just the, the conversations we had. And even I think there was a, a, I think a call that you made. And I still remember hearing um, the way that you were coaching someone through a particular leadership challenge on the on a, on a phone call and I remember saying to you afterwards I'm like wow thank you for the you know the opportunity to be able to have been able to observe this it was a it was definitely a master class in leadership but I think for um, an Aussie like me who's a little bit ADHD I think one of the favorite things was was um, doing little videos of chasing squirrels through the park um, so it was quite fun, and um, but again, it was it, it, you prompted me in that moment to to create these videos, and um, it, it's a good reminder now to go back and actually um, share some more of those now that um, um, we're not able to travel as much as we could. Yeah, I can't wait till we can get back together again and start chasing the squirrels. <laughs> I think it's good fun. Now I want to shift the topic to what is one minute worth to you, and how do you get more time? The average American, according to Jake Paul and me and the research that we did, makes $31,500 a year. Actually, it's the U.S. Census Bureau. The household income is maybe like 45 or 50. And that works out to $15 an hour. $15 an hour for 60 minutes is 25 cents a minute. And I remember when we were running ads, YouTube ads, Facebook ads, anything with video in it. We would see how much does it cost to get someone's attention and it works out to about eight dollars an hour if your content is pretty decent if your content's terrible it might be 20 or 30 dollars an hour if it's on linkedin where you have to appeal to a professional audience and it's tougher or your executives have less time it might work out to 100 or 200 dollars an hour but you think hmm well if it costs 50 dollars let's just say let's say you're terrible it costs you $50 to get attention for an hour, but with the right people. What is that actually worth? And, and looking at agencies, for example, of all different types, we found that the average agency monetizes at about $100 an hour. So every hour they spend working or every hour they spend with the client generates about $100 in ad additional income. So if you do the math on that, if you can buy hours for $7 and sell them for $100, that's pretty good math, right? So if you can buy a minute for 25 cents, and if you can monetize that at $10, that's pretty good. So I started thinking about time and money, interchangeable parts, kind of like this Marxist theory of economics where it's capital and labor in combination can increase output. And I think, how do I get more stuff done? I can hire more people, which is giving me back time. I can do the work myself, which is saving me money, but costing me time. And I'm trying to use combinations of labor and capital to get things done. So think about the goal that you have. What are you trying to do as a business? Who are you trying to impact? How many relationships are you trying to develop? And the larger that number is, the more you're going to have to multiply your message where it's not going to be direct live contact. So here in this clubhouse room, I think we have maybe 60 people or something like that. But because it's being recorded, that's the red circle here. This has the potential for tens of thousands or even millions of people to be able to listen to this, to be able to go to Startup Club and see it there, to retweet pieces of it, the social media snippets that we pull out of it. So think about the multiplying impact of the things that you were doing as part of your everyday life. Like that moment with Stacy and I hanging out 
that was timeless. That's something we'll share. That's something other people can share. Think about those highlight moments so that those people that are not yet aware of you and your story, but should or could be customers, they could experience that. And it's not that you don't want to talk to these people. It's that when you do this, you are bypassing the initial stages so that when you do spend time with people, it's higher quality. It's like they already know you. This podcast I was on a little earlier with Nick Parker and the Fitness Business Podcast, I've never met this guy before. But when we got together, he said, I feel like I know you because I've been consuming all your stuff for years. And so we were able to hit it off immediately. It was great. We didn't have to go through a lot of the preliminary stuff because I looked up who he was and he looked up who I was. The world of digital, especially with COVID, has flipped this situation where you you now learn about people and their inner values and stories. And then later you meet them in person. And it used to be 30 or 40 years ago, whether it's dating or general relationship building, you see them, you know their name, you see you know, those, you know, from the outside all the way in. And then you start having these discussions about what they like and their preferences and things you'd find on their profile, you know, eventually. And then now you, you it's, it's outside, it's, it's inside out. I remember when we started Yahoo Personals, this was, I want to say it was over 20 years ago. This is a dating site. I think we sold it to Medic or Match or one of these other groups. We saw that, that there was some stigma on dating online, for example, because it was for creepy people. It was weird. Now it's mainstream, right? And what made it weird was that it flipped the psychology of what humans are used to, at least anyone over 30, which is me and a lot of us that are business owners, where you – online you're learning about who these people are before you maybe even know what they look like which is weird and so the human biology the human mind isn't really used to that anyone under 30 who was built with you know whatever grew up with an iphone embedded in their hand they naturally assume this digital first world and so for us to be able to grow our brands and grow our presences we need to think about how the younger generation is starting with learning about who you are and learning about those relationships in your social media and looking you looking at you on Instagram and all that before they ever meet you. And I think with COVID and all this, it's accelerated this digital first, learn about people where there's a lot of friends like Thomas Hawkins. I don't think I've met you in person yet. Jeffrey, I don't think I've met you in person yet. Have we met? I don't think so, right? Nope, not in person. But I, but I feel like I know both of you well. Stacy, I've met in person. Claude, I remember because of his beautiful lime green background on these Zoom calls, but I've not actually met Claude, but I feel like I know Claude. You know, Chris and I have been together and she, in, in Clubhouse rooms. She even wrote a guest post and we had a couple of Facebook posts that went semi-viral, right? She's here, here in the audience. It's fan a lot of these people, I feel like I know them, but I've never met them. But the one minute, the things you do in one minute can have an amazing impact. For example, Chris Ruby, you can see her. She's has got the black hair. She's at Chris Ruby, CEO of Ruby Media Group. She's right there in the row just below us. We were in a clubhouse room and some terrorist basically came in and tried to take over our room with a few hundred people that were in it. And thank goodness she was there to defend me and some other friends were there to defend me because they, they were just trying to derail the conversation. And that was that was a really cool moment that then I, I just said, wow, thank you so much, Chris, and made a Facebook post about it. And then we connected and then she wrote an article. Then we did another clubhouse room about it. But that's the kind of stuff that literally just one moment, just one thing that she said on Twitter, I want to say, spawned all these other pieces. So think about this multiplying impact of what you can do in one minute and the stuff that Jeffrey was saying. Or Thomas is saying that the, the gratitude videos or breathing or one minute of exercise. I've got a post-it note. You can't see me, but I've got a post-it note where I've written down different things that you guys have said that you can do in a minute and some of the things that I can do in a minute. I'd love to hear from the audience. What is it that you get done in one minute? It doesn't have to be clever. It could be part of your routine. And what's the impact? of that thing that you're doing. So you see that hand raise button in the bottom of your screen. Maybe you are listening and you just like listening, like you're working out, but you don't really want to say anything. 
right? Because that could be scary. Public speaking, holy moly. But I would encourage you, hit the hand raise button. I'd love to hear your tip. This is the Coach You Show where we're learning from other people. It's not just me. I just want to be the guide on the topic of what we're learning together. But I'd love to hear from you guys. What yeah. can you do? And, sorry, go ahead, Jeffrey. No, I was going to say, while we're waiting for people to raise their hand, you know, one thing you can do right here in Clubhouse in a minute, and it's related to what you were just talking about, is you can get to know someone in a minute. In other words, you could take a minute, tap on any one of our profiles or anyone in the audience's profile, and in a minute, learn a whole lot about them, click through to their social media site, and just spend one minute finding out more about who they are. Even the person who's virtually next to you, wherever you're standing and sitting right now. In fact, if you wanted to, just take a minute now and tap on the person to your right and learn about them. Read their profile. Tap on their social media link. And, of course, come on up on stage and raise your hand. I'll give you an example of two more things. I'm going to do it right now versus just talk about it. Not this weekend, but the next weekend. I've got a keynote address with one of the sponsored by one of the largest organizations in South, South, I can't even speak English, Southeast Asia for personal development. They sponsor Tony Robbins and Gary Vaynerchuk and things like this. So I'm going to be one of the speakers. The trouble is because it's in Asia, it is between the hours of midnight and 5 a.m. Pacific. If any of you guys have stories that you want to share about how you built your brand and your business through digital marketing, one minute videos, dollar a day, these other components, I'd love to invite you to come speak and we can put you in the program. If you want to do that, it literally will take you one minute, one, one minute to tap on my profile and tell me what you want to talk about and give me some proof of what you've done. Uh, here's another thing that I do in one minute. I did this today. I should do it all, every day. I connect with friends on LinkedIn, or I, I get tons of LinkedIn connection requests. I think I'm at almost 30,000. But I look at every one of them. I don't have a VA do it. It's actually me. And people that I like, that I've met, I'll click on their profile, and I'll sit there and click plus and endorse them on the different skills. Not a recommendation, although I write recommendations too. Literally click plus, you know, public speaking, digital marketing, coaching, entrepreneurship, typing 50 words per minute, whatever it is. I'll click, I'll go and click plus on each of those things. And then that generates notifications that they see. Then maybe they do the same thing for me. It builds a better connection. I do that with our clients. I do it with new team members. And it's kind of a nice surprise where they just joined our company and they see, wow, Dennis, you came in and endorsed you on this, 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 and that skill literally took me a minute. And I've got a lot of people that have reached back to me saying, wow, that was really thoughtful that you went and clicked plus on all these different skills that I have. And then I'll say, that's great. You have 17 skills in your LinkedIn profile. You know, you have fit, you can have 50. Why don't you fill out the remaining 33 or however many to get to 50? See, all it takes is literally just one minute to do that. Hey, Claude, welcome to the Coach You Show. Thank you. Good morning. It's morning here in Singapore. Morning. Oh, and you consent to being recorded, yes? Because we're turning this into notes and such. Yeah, I should do that. But I just enjoy every Friday morning. So that's in my calendar. So thank you for, 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 the, for the room. And, and what I do in a minute, I, I, I was in event, I would say, because now everything is stopped. But uh, I'm in the event industry for many years. And what I've been doing for quite some time now is I take canvas, I take a photo of the person which has a birthday today, and I do a, a nice little image, which I WhatsApp them. And the return I get is just amazing. I do that, of course, for clients, uh, the beauty of LinkedIn or whatever social media, but also my database, I would know who has birthday. And I just send a nice little kind of a, I have a template. I've done a nice template. Uh, happy birthday, and I put their photo and, and send it to them. And uh, it's a nice way to connect with uh, with my clients and with the people around that I know. Fantastic, Claude. Are you sharing that on Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook and these other channels too? No, no, because I mean, some have done it. Some of the, of the person I've sent have done it. I feel they should be the one doing it, not me, because some people don't like to to wow, that is the birthday uh, and so on. Uh, I, I might try uh, when I found the day of May for your birthday, I might try that. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. I think what, what Claude said is, is really good too because it is so easy 
to click like on Facebook or Instagram or do something publicly, it's very easy. And because that's so common now, sometimes you'll get more attention if it's someone special if you actually do something privately and not publicly like Claude was doing, just sending it to them privately. You know, it, there's a trade-off. Sometimes it's great to do things publicly, but sometimes you can get a little bit more bang for your minute if you do something special for someone that's private that no one else knows about and that they don't think you're trying to do it to get more attention to yourself. It's truly just about them if you do it privately. So I like that, Claude. Yeah, thank you, Thomas. I think it's true. I mean, as much as, and I, I'm why I'm following Dennis and I want to learn more about social media and all this, I think to take the time to send a personal message, uh, it's, it's very important as well. Uh, another thing I do also every... Every week, I have a number of people I absolutely I call, and and sometimes to give a personal call, uh, and and give a message is also uh, very powerful. I found. How many of those messages are you just leaving asynchronously, like you just literally leave a fifteen second message as a voicemail or Instagram, and how many of them are actually live calls? And what do you see as the difference? Oh, they're all live calls. I I mean. I, when I call someone, uh, uh, and the beauty is people now have time because they're not traveling and all this. So I found the response, people have time to spend 10 minutes on the call, which in the past, if I call a client, I, I, I know the guy is maybe traveling. I don't know where it is, but now I know they are, they are here. They are, they are somewhere. They're, the chance of traveling at Paki, especially for us in Singapore, since we are still on lockdown very strong, uh, I know they are here. So it's very powerful. Um, so I don't leave a message. I, 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 I speak to them, uh, or often again, when I send the canvas, uh, photo for the birthday, they will, they will directly respond. I think the rate is very, very high. I, I don't remember anyone which has not say, Hey, thank you. We should meet for a coffee. And then when they say, thank you, I say, Oh, let's meet for a coffee or, or vino. So I have a lineup of, of meeting when we reopen Singapore. We just reopened the restaurant two days ago. Finally, so we can meet now five person again. So I have a lineup uh, every every week of people I'm going to meet. Incredible! Then, yeah, congratulations. Good job on getting clients that way. Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you, back Shane. to you. Yeah. So uh, again, as Dennis has said earlier, if you want to contribute your uh, one minute idea, please raise your hand. We're happy to welcome you up on stage. We've got about. 27 more minutes to go. We do this show for an hour. Um, but I think uh, Claude brought up some really good things. And, and another thing you can do, too, when you, in terms of uh, showing appreciation for other people is, you know, people that you know, sometimes you're reminded of them. Something happens and you're thinking about them, and we keep that inside. When that happens, if you don't have time, jot it down. Maybe keep a list of that. And then when you do have time to send them a message, you, you can, uh, you know, write them a note that's very personal, like, you know, Hey, I walked by this restaurant the other day and I remember that that's where we met for dinner that one time or something like that. It could be just something that you were triggered to make you think of a person. And instead of just smiling and keeping it in your memory, let them know that you were thinking about them and let them know why. What triggered that um, memory, I think, is, is a nice thing you can do for people, too. Smart. I had a coaching call yesterday with one of our private clients and she's starting from ground zero. She's got 25 years of experience coaching and training and teaching folks in the world of IT, but she never brought it online. And she had this mindset block of how social media and these things is just really not my thing. And she this is the way I broke her through that is to say, think about what you can do in 15 seconds when you just say hi to a friend. Think about if that person was in the room, what would you say to them? So when you look at the camera and you freeze up because you're trying to record a video and do it perfectly, imagine that that camera lens was just the left eyeball of that friend of yours. And you're talking just to them as a good friend. You're ignoring all this other stuff that, which can intimidate you in the studio. And that's how you make a powerful one minute video. I think about our times with Brad Lee and I see Curtis is here from Lightspeed and he helps people grow their personal brands and expertise by using the Lightspeed VT platform. I've been with Bradley so many times where he's smoking cigars and showing me how it's a legit, you know, Cuban cigar because of the way it has this, you know, whatever it is, the labels that you can look up online or being in the studio with him 
or going out to eat at Maggiano's because he likes to eat there for some reason. Those are all little moments in time. And like my friend who I coached yesterday, I said, think about those precious little moments. And if you just record them, you document them. It's not you're trying to show off your lifestyle with Lamborghinis, but you're honoring these other people. That's what the shift is with social media. When you look at Instagram stories and YouTube shorts, which is now vertical one minute videos, 58 seconds really, because for some reason at one minute, it causes a problem. Snapchat, TikTok, right? Eight seconds to 90 second stories, vertical. They're all little things that you could do. And I had this mental block too, thinking I don't have the time to do all the social media stuff. I don't want to be dancing on TikTok, but I could share a tip. I could share three tips on how we run a clubhouse show and turn it into a blog post and audio on in the whole process and how we do it on startup.club with Jeffrey, right? What are things that you know how to do or things that you, you've observed that you can record in 15 seconds or up to a minute in raw video? And if you literally just spent five minutes a day doing this, you can't say that you're too busy. Five quick little tips of 15 seconds to a minute each, let's just call that two or three minutes. That's all it takes. In an hour, I'm going over to the Cosmopolitan to go eat at the STK restaurant, which is a Gordon Ramsay steak place. I looked it up on Yelp. It looks ridiculous. And we're going to be with some other health influencers. I think Ariana Huffington might be at our dinner, some of these other people. And for sure, you're going to see some pictures. Well, not just pictures, short little 15 second videos with the organizer and other folks that I'm going to take. Think about how, it, you know, you'd normally, if you're like me and you're older, your natural inclination is to take a picture when you're with these other people. And Matt, you might even take a selfie picture and stick your left arm out while they're on your right side and smile, which is sort of awkward because you got to hold the camera in the right way. But instead of doing the selfie picture, try taking a selfie video. Anytime that you would take a picture, just take a video. Because in 4K on the iPhone, most phones, even if it's Samsung or whatnot, it shoots in 4K by default. You can take that video which now all of a sudden is, what is it, 24 frames per second. So it's a 15 second video, which is a thousand plus little pictures. You can take any one of those pictures and use from the video and now you got a picture. So why ever take a photo when you can take a video and pull out any one of the frames at 24 frames per second? Because maybe your eyes are closed or whatnot. And now you're creating these different moments that you can share. One of my favorite things to do is if I'm in line at Costco or I have a minute to kill, I'm at the microwave, I'm waiting for something, is I will scan through social media. You guys probably do it too. But while you're scanning through social media, you ha you're you mindful enough to think about, just like Stacy with her gratitude pieces, it, it reminds you of these moments. And so instead of just scrolling past, click like and then just comment back on it, right? You can literally comment with video. My friend Mark got a new property yesterday, this monstrous eight bedroom house in Vegas that he's about to rent out. And we were walking through it and I saw a video from Luria Petrucci who runs live streaming pros. This is how I learned how to live stream from her and set up the video studio and all that. And she's happy and bubbly and she's showing how to do her studio. And instead of just commenting back saying, wow, that's really awesome what you've done with live streaming. Instead, I, I clicked and I hit the little photo icon in the comment because on, on Facebook, you can comment back with a video. Most people don't know that. And I made a little 30 second video saying, Luria, I love how you've helped the community live stream. I don't think there's anyone better than you who makes it easy for people like me who are scared of all this equipment. You make it a lot of fun. I don't think anyone is a better teacher at live streaming than you are. And I'd highly recommend anyone who wants to start live streaming and find it confusing to check out the live streaming pro accelerator program. It's a hundred dollars a month or, you know, whatever it is. And I, I literally made, I didn't mean it to turn into a testimonial, but that's what it was. And it took me less than a minute to do that. So when you can reply with video, if you're scanning through social media, here's the point. Look at where you could engage back because most people they're 99% consuming and 1% creating. Try to get that closer to 90, 10, or maybe even 80, 20. If you are creating even five minutes per day, you're going to be ahead of 95 plus percent of your competition. 
Think about that. Jess, welcome. Hello. I just came into the room, so I'm fairly new, so I'm trying to listen in and see um, what you guys are discussing so I can see what I'm going to ask you guys. Thank ah, you for having me. Glad you're here. Is that a Scottish Terrier? What kind of doggy is that? It's funny because he's actually a multi-poo, but he doesn't really look like a multi-poo. <laughs> well, glad you're here, Jess. Thank you so much. You know, Dennis, what you were saying about doing the short videos, it actually takes less time than typing a response in many cases. And even responding to a tweet, you know, Gary V, believe it or not, he does this a lot. I was in Amsterdam a couple of years ago for a conference, and Gary V was there as well. And I've met Gary a few times, and I know him. So I tweeted to him to, to say hello that I was at the conference. And a few moments later, I got a video tweet back from him um, just saying hello. He was in the back of a car on his way something. And, and I realized at that moment that what he did was so smart because it literally took him less time than it would have to try to type a response. And it's and probably almost the same amount of time to read my tweet. He just responded with it, literally a five-second video. Hey, Sass, how are you? Good to see you're in town. Boom, done. So, and I always said I should do more of it, and I haven't. So, Dennis, thank you for reminding me. I'm going to start responding to tweets with short videos like Gary did to me. That is so smart. Not only is it faster, it's more personable, and it's inimitable. So I got hit up two days ago by someone who I thought, I don't know if it's really this person or if it's a bot or if it's a VA. And I said, show me who you are. That's actually you. Reply back with the video, you know, show, talking about something that we know. Right. And they replied back with the video saying, yeah, it's actually me. I'm, I, you know, it's, it's dark out here. So I didn't want to show my face, but yes, it's actually me. And the other reason too, is that you guys probably get this too there are a lot of phishing scams out there. You've seen these scams where they say, hey, I'm stuck in in East Asia, you know, I'm in, in Malaysia somewhere and I need $500 because I my wallet got stolen. Can you please send it in Bitcoin to this particular address, right? And you, you don't really know if it's them. And I almost fell for it a couple times because I thought, oh my goodness, this is a friend of mine. I need to help him out. I'm gonna send him some money, but a lot of the times they got fished or they're somehow they installed some app they weren't supposed to, or their VA had control of it and accidentally gave access and it really isn't them. So I often will tell people if it's actually you reply with video, right? And it's pretty hard to fake that. And it's so much faster. It's so much better. When this whole COVID thing went down back in March ish of last year, I thought, well, let's just, Let's release all our training for free temporarily for everyone that wants to become a professional digital marketing, wants to get certified. And I was inspired by Ryan Dice because he and I were at Digital Marketers headquarters on the last day before he shut everything down because everything in the state had to shut down. We taught the last workshop there in Austin, Texas. And he said, you know what? We're going to make Digital Marketer free right now. And I said, we'll make our stuff free. But in order to get it, you've got to reply with love is kind, if you guys remember. And we had thousands of people that were replying to my inbox. So I was personally fielding them, just like Gary V was replying to you, Sass. And what I did, which was a great exercise, I learned so much from doing it, is as these things were coming in, because you think, how am I gonna handle 2,000 of these things that are just coming in? I'd be at the jacuzzi, right, just relaxing. And these things would come in, and I would make a 10-second video saying, hey, Stacy." I'm so glad you're joining the program, you know, greetings from the jacuzzi. And you have all these people that have shared my jacuzzi videos because they were, they're sending it in an email and I'm replying back in the email with the video. Cause you know, when you, you have Gmail, for example, you hit reply and you can start typing in words, but the little camera icons there too. So I was replying with video there and I've had so many people say, did you get a jacuzzi video from Dennis? <laughs> it's like a 10 second jacuzzi video. <laughs> But I'd literally pumped through 2,000 of these. And if you guys want, I, Clubhouse, you can only hear me, but someday I'll log into my inbox and you'll see how many people have sent these and how many I replied from the jacuzzi or I'm out jogging or I'm at the supermarket or you know walking the dog or one of these things. And people really like it. It's so spontaneous. They would never expect it. Right? I'm out of breath as I'm jogging saying, hey, Claude, hey, you know, glad to see you reaching out for the training. Man, I want to see you succeed in Singapore, 
and you know do do the events and restaurants right and they they really like that the, the fact that it's authentic and it's where you are on the spot it's not in the studio it connects with people better and thus when we take these components and we turn them into ads we turn them into courses it does better than professional studio video think about that when you reply to somebody with video and maybe only do five of them in a day which takes you two minutes it probably takes you a whole hour of trying to get the guts to do that but it only only takes a couple minutes if you actually yeah, Thomas is saying yes you guys know that it's all in the, the fear of just oh I need to like muster the courage but once you do you can just rattle off 20 of them and then you feel so good you're like oh yeah this is great and so, so you get the endorphins from, endorphins from knowing that you did it but here's the other thing that you might not expect when you do this guess what your friend or your subject or whoever it is they often will reply back with video and they'll say something positive and they'll say man dennis i've known you for the last 10 years and i hope you're doing well or you know whatever it might be literally two minutes ago jake Bajorseth just texted me and he wants to make more videos we've done a, did a bunch of training as part of this jake paul financial freedom movement program jake reached out to me and wanted to do this training so we have this thing we're about to release in a couple of weeks and it's it, it takes kind of a snowball avalanche rolling ball effect where you make a video they make a video you'll see if you watch any of our videos we do training where i'll log into my phone because you can do zoom on your phone and you'll see us go back and forth with text messages with different friends of mine and then i'll reply with the video and all of a sudden they'll reply with the video and then i'll reply with the video and they'll reply with the video it's kind of like people you know, resharing Instagram stories and the window gets smaller and smaller and smaller. It's like the hall of mirrors kind of thing. But I encourage you to, to think about what the impact would be when you just show gratitude or you just show people, hey, I thought you might like this. I'm eating at this this restaurant and it reminded me of this other restaurant that we were at, you know, together last time we met or something like that. So think about how the reusability of video builds your brand, not because you're trying to be a personal brand, but because you're honoring other people and that's actually the best way to build your business. Just like Claude's building his business because of the word of mouth and social from the clients that he has. He doesn't even have to talk about his business. He's got his clients doing it for him. You know, and all, the other thing that's cool about short videos, Dennis is, as you said, you know, you could do five tips a day, really easy, a minute each. But if you do that regularly, eventually you have the ability to create a longer form video. You know, you can go back at the end of the year and you might have a hundred tips and you can put together a half hour video of a hundred tips. You can, you know, literally you can do this very easily too. You can take all those clips, you could upload them to something like Animoto and it'll string them all together, let you put some music behind it, let you add some titles at the beginning and end or whatever. And with very little effort, you can take all those short videos you had and, and do um, a long video. I always do. Um, I always take a lot of pictures of my vegan food. At least I did when I was traveling a lot and they're all going on Instagram. And every year at the end of the year, I'll pull all those pictures from my Instagram feed from that year, throw them into Animoto and create a short video of all the vegan dishes I had at restaurants around the world the previous year. And I've been doing that for like six years. And then all those videos are on my blog. So doing short stuff is easy. And in the end, it lets you do long stuff with the short stuff. Amen, Jeffrey. I would love to see that just for fun, like this rapid fire movie trailer compilation of all the vegan dishes. And then I imagine you could group them together by category. So you could have a reel that's just for the, the chicken like things or the steak like things. So the ones that are just vegetables or the ones that right, the different sorts of types of dishes, main courses and appetizers and desserts. I would definitely see that. I'd I'll send you the link. I'll send you the link. They're all on my, on my, my website. I'll send you a link <laughs> and then turn them into YouTube shorts and then turn them in, into Instagram stories, which have to be 15 seconds of vertical video or less. Right. You can take that one minute of video and you can turn it into 50 different assets. And now all of a sudden that one minute of time has turned into hours of production. You could use Animoto, but people like me, I'm lazy. I'll just put it to Fiverr or I'll have our VAs do it. Right. We've got a webinar coming up next week with Fiverr. It's their biggest marketing event of the year. And I'm the keynote and I'm going to showcase examples of you guys using Fiverr. So go ahead and send me an email, Dennis at blitzmetrics.com with screenshots of your Fiverr gig. If you've used Fiverr, could be a video, could be a website, 
It could be a voiceover, it could be a design, like a graphics design logo, could be an ebook, whatever it is that you had Fiverr do for you, I would love to feature you. You see, I just literally talked about that. That's one minute, one minute of pitching. It's not even direct pitching. I'm solic- I'm gonna highlight you guys. I wanna pitch you guys. See about see how many things we can cover in just one minute. If Jeffrey or our team were to take today's episode or any other episodes of the Coach You Show and chop it into many segments, how many little stories do you think we could get? Not everyone's going to listen or watch for a whole hour, but there could be one little component that we pull out that's relevant to who they are. So think about this. If you are the search engine or you're Amazon or Netflix or Facebook, and there's all this content that's being produced and you've got to figure out what content should go to what person based on the news feed or some kind of algorithm well if if these users are chopping up their content into these different pieces it's going to be a lot easier to match more relevantly because if you just upload a whole hour long episode and you cover all these random topics which each of them might be a good interesting discussion it's going to be very hard for the algorithm now google's getting smarter where they can pull out different clips because you can, I forgot what it's called, but you can mark out different sections inside a YouTube video. And, you know, Google will show you just that piece. But with social media, TikTok, especially, is looking for that kind of context in those moments and figuring out who is interested in that content you just made. So inside Jake Paul's previous house, because he just moved to Puerto Rico, there's a Lego wall. You guys know about this? There's a wall just made of Legos. It's a child's dream which is shows you how good jake is as a marketer because who's going to have a what is it a twenty-five thousand square foot mansion and have this wall full of legos but you pull the string and all the legos come tumbling down right and when we were there filming one of our guys was out wandering about and he pulled the lego thing somebody caught it on film and all these legos came showering down on him and that video got put on TikTok by one of our friends who was filming Jake and I when we were doing the the whole course. And it got something like two and a half million views. And it wasn't because the video was necessarily interesting. It was, it was because the TikTok algorithm was reading the background and it recognized it was Jake Paul's house. And other folks I know who are very smart about TikTok, who have millions of followers each, are saying the same thing. TikTok, they, they will change their backgrounds to have certain words or certain objects which will influence the newsfeed. Facebook's newsfeed doesn't use those factors as far as we know right now. But think about how you segment down to exactly what you want to talk about. So Jess with her multi-poo, the fact that she can make a a little video with a multi-poo in in the background, that's definitely going to influence what the algorithm is going to do. If you look at social, most of Twitter or Facebook is going to be based on the words that you say. It's going to be based on who's engaging. So then it'll show it to other people who are like the people who engage, which is called the collaborative filter. But now the algorithms are shifting into actually reading, doing facial recognition, recognizing the inside of Jake Paul's house, and then showing it to Jake Paul's followers. Isn't that neat? Just from an account that isn't even really a big deal. Alex Berman did the same thing. He's intentionally changing what's in his background on his TikTok videos, and he's had some of them that have also gone to several million views because of the the music that he's playing or the these this like we're at Universal Studios and we're at the Simpsons ride and other people who are at the Simpsons were like there that's people TikTok is so smart it's going to show you these different items so think as you're making these little pieces of content you want to be you want to be feeding the algorithm if that makes sense hey I'd love to hear what you guys think about this. Well, we've got about six minutes left, so if you do have something you want to contribute, please raise your hand. We're happy to bring you up on stage. If not, we can uh, keep talking to the people on stage and share some more one-minute tips or comments on anything that we've been talking about so far. Well, so since Tom I'm on stage... Oh, yeah, go ahead, Claude. Uh, yeah, yeah, since I'm on stage and I was sharing what I, I do with my little canvas photos and, and sharing birthday. Uh, after listening to you, Dennis, and thank you for that, I'm going to challenge myself to turn this into videos. Um, I used to do two, three years ago, a, a post every Friday called uh, It's Friday Santé. So I would just have a glass of wine with someone. And what was very funny is if I were not to post, people would ask me, hey, 
who are you having a glass of wine with? So I want to revive that. And since now, again, we just reopened the restaurant in Singapore and but make a video out of it. And I love what you shared saying, honoring someone. Uh, uh, I think that's maybe what was stopping me to do it. Um, but I think if I honor a client or a friend, that will be lovely to do it. So watch my post on Fridays then. Thank you, I'm done speaking. Great idea, Claude. Fantastic, you should do that every Friday. Make it a routine, just like working out. Starting today. I'll be starting today, it's Friday. Yeah. Hey, Jess, it looked like you were gonna say something. Yes, I actually wanted to uh, touch in on that because um, that's awesome that um, Claude is going to be pushing himself because I think that's really important. Um, I do short form content um, and I also help different businesses pretty much um, gain brand awareness because uh, I noticed that a lot of people that do upload on social media don't take advantage of of the actual fact that Instagram's converting more to like a video platform. So the clients that I've worked with when I've, um, the deliverables that I've given to them, they've noticed a huge um, turnaround in numbers as far as like not only followers, but more people buying their products or for example, for keynote speakers, when they um, have uploaded their videos with motion graphics and with actual captions or, or if they have audio that they record here, like you were saying, Dennis, um, you know, we have been able to extract the audio and create an audio waveform with the visual in the background, as well as um, different drone, photo uh, drone footage that we have, because we, we also have drones. So we record as much as we can. So those that don't want to be necessarily on camera, but don't mind speaking um, or have a podcast, that it does help them. So that's something that is very, very awesome. And thank you for um, acknowledging the video that I did of my dog because I'm trying to upload more work, but more of my personal preference of like the things that I like on my page because we are working on our business profile. Um, but as much as far as like the items and the videos that are on my actual Instagram, it's all work that we've done with my team. So I, I think that it's really important when that's something that I'm trying to challenge myself to is just create, keep creating and upload as much as possible. Good job, Jess. And I've looked at your Instagram. You should also add your Twitter here to your clubhouse because those are the two social networks that you can have there and people can connect with you. And you'll find that the more social networks that you're on and the more you cross share that video, the more clients are going to learn about who you are and your personality and just get out there and share. Just like Tom Hawkins, he changed his background to orange so we could participate. And you see why like Jeffrey and me and Thomas, we've got red and orange at the top. It's because social network is dominated by blue, which is Facebook. So we're using the exact opposite color. And you've got kind of a pinkish color, or I guess, was that magenta? <laughs> what a beautiful color you have, like blood orange. Love it. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, it's been a good time in the coach you show where you're learning from other people who are practitioners. I like to teach from what I know and what we observed and bringing in special guests. This is being recorded so that you can come back to it later. You can see it on startup.club. Our buddy Jeffrey Sass, that is his actual name, <laughs> has been gracious enough to handle all the details, working hard behind the scenes, organizing, transcribing, storing all these pieces. We're gonna turn a lot of these into articles and even turn them into books. So the tips that you guys provide, we're going to store later because we practice what we preach and we're gonna create other kinds of derivative content with that. So I'm so glad that you guys are here spending time with Jeffrey and me and Stacy and Thomas and Jess and Claude and our other friends. Jeffrey, round us out, my friend. Absolutely. And it's not just me. There's a team of people at Startup Club that are working behind the scenes to work on the website and record all these shows and help curate some great shows on Startup Club. So as Dennis mentioned, this is the Coach You Show. We do this every Thursday evening at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific on Startup Club. Uh, you can go to startup.club and see the past recordings of the Coach You Show and many other shows that we have, like tomorrow afternoon, Fridays at 2. We do the Serial Entrepreneur Hour, where we kind of decode what's ticking behind the minds of, of serial entrepreneurs and, and 
We've got a lot of good guests. And this month in August, it's sales month. So each week we've been talking about different sales hacks and sales tips. And next Friday at 2, we have Jack Daly, who's a recognized author and uh, sales consultant who's going to be joining us in the Serial Entrepreneur Hour as well. So you can get more information over at startup.club. Thank you, Dennis, for hosting this show every week and sharing all the great knowledge and stories. And, and it's really always a pleasure. I always take a lot of notes, but you don't have to take notes. You can go and listen to the recordings again. So thanks everyone for spending your time with us tonight. We really do appreciate it. You guys are awesome. We'll see you next week. Thank you.